Hi there. This week we're going to watch the first feature film that Hitchcock directed in London in 1926. The year before he began directing in London, he made his first two feature films in Germany. And what I'd like to talk about in this video is German film in the 1920s and how that influenced Hitchcock's approach to The Lodger. For people who loved film, Germany was one of the places to be in the 1920s. It was incredibly exciting period. And Hitchcock had the chance to observe some of the major directors of the time at work when he was in a major German studio. He was also influenced by a dominant film movement of the time, an art movement called German Expressionism. And I'm going to show you some slides that illustrate the impact of Expressionism on his film. Thank you. In the first video for this week, I talked about Hitchcock's career in London in the 1920s and how he worked in many different aspects of the film industry, from creating publicity, writing and adapting scripts, and editing. In 1925, he was offered the opportunity to travel to Berlin to work as an assistant director on a film called The Blackguard. He ended up directing part of the film, and his work impressed his bosses back in England so much that he was able to return to Germany later in 1925, this time to Munich. While he was in Munich, he directed his first two films, The Pleasure Garden and The Mountain Eagle. The Pleasure Garden still exists, and you can watch it on YouTube, but nobody has been able to find a print of The Mountain Eagle. That's the one you see here. It's number one on the British Film Institute's most wanted list of lost films. I mention it because if it ever turns up, you'll hear about it all over the news and you will know why it's important. So Hitchcock made two trips to Germany in 1925, and they were crucial to his artistic development. Why Germany, we might ask. In the history of film and many other art forms, there are certain decades where we see an explosion of ideas, and the 1920s was one of those decades. Startling new films emerged in Germany, France, the UK, Japan, and the US. Germany was a place that an up-and-coming filmmaker like Hitchcock wanted to go. There was an enormous studio outside Berlin called Ufa that was the largest studio in the world at the time, bigger even than anything in Hollywood. And that was where he worked on his first trip in early 1925. Many of Germany's major directors worked at Ufa, and Hitchcock had a chance to watch them in action and also to learn about the innovative special effects the German experts had developed. So being in Germany in 1925 was like a crash course in advanced filmmaking. Some of the most famous German films of the time were influenced by an art movement known as German Expressionism. Historians don't agree on a fixed date when it began, but it became very important to film in the 1920s. Expressionism was not interested in realistic or naturalistic representations. Instead, artists created distorted images that were meant to have an emotional effect. You can see those qualities in this poster for The Lodger. The poster features abstract geometric shapes that create an angular, jagged effect. The world of German Expressionism is shifting and unstable. Visually, we don't feel secure in this space, and neither do the characters in The Lodger. In fact, we see this jagged visual style right from the beginning of the film on the credits. I'm going to give you a heads up. The Lodger is a silent film with intertitles. Intertitles are words on the screen between the visual images, and they are carefully designed too. Hitchcock designed intertitles early in his career, so he paid attention to them. In German Expressionist films and in The Lodger, the abstraction and distortion I mentioned are often created through lighting and the use of shadows. Here is an image of Mrs. Bunting in her bedroom. She hears her lodger leaving the house late at night and wonders what this means. Her world is becoming more unstable, and anxiety and claustrophobia are closing in. Those feelings are conveyed through the giant shadows on the wall behind her. Those shadows also look like bars of a prison cell, emphasizing her feeling of being trapped. We'll see many uses of shadows and prison bars, too, throughout the lodger. Besides prison bars, there are other visual motifs that we see in German films of the 1920s, such as staircases. 
German films sometimes featured staircases seen from above, and we see this image in the lodger as well. In fact, that is the lodger's hand there on the railing on the left. Shooting the staircase from above creates a dizzying effect, almost like vertigo, and emphasizes the feeling of instability that I mentioned. We can also see the staircase motif in, in some of Hitchcock's films later. Here we see a similar shot in Vertigo and another one in Psycho. The staircase imagery reminds us how German films of the 1920s influenced Hitchcock's thinking even decades later. We also know that there were specific films that directly influenced The Lodger. One of them was the original Dracula film Nosferatu from 1922. If you haven't seen it, it is just the thing for Halloween. When the lodger arrives at the bunting's door on the left, he's framed in the doorway in the same pose as Nosferatu there on the right, and the lodger evokes a similar feeling of dread. We also know that Hitchcock got to watch the director of Nosferatu, F.W. Murnau, when the two of them were at Ufa. Murnau was working on another film, The Last Laugh, which is one of the treasures of German cinema in the 1920s. The Last Laugh is famous for conveying the story and the character's emotions without dialogue or even intertitles. Hitchcock was fascinated by the film's use of close-ups, and he said many times that The Last Laugh shaped his thinking about the close-ups in The Lodger. So Hitchcock's experiences doing his two trips to Germany in 1925 greatly influenced The Lodger and also his later films in Hollywood. When he returned to London after his trips to Germany, The Lodger was the first film he directed, and it is considered to be the first major film of his career. One last note, The Lodger is also the first time that Hitchcock makes one of his famous cameo appearances, and it's in this scene. He's in a newspaper office on the phone. I hope you've enjoyed looking at the memorable visual style of The Lodger and learning about the impact of Hitchcock's time in Germany on his work. Thank you.